Good morning. Today is Tuesday, Chaf Dalad Tevis, the 24th day of Tevis. It is the yard site of the Alta Rebbe, the Balatanya, the author of the Tanya, the author of the Shulchan Aruch Arav, the great sage that we study every day, the Tanya from the Alta Rebbe. And on the day of his yard site of a tzaddik, it says everything what the tzaddik did in his lifetime comes and shines and brings redemptions and salvations to those who follow him. So indeed, by studying the Alter Rebbe's Sefer de Tanya, we connect with the Alter Rebbe and we should all get the, get the brachas. And today we begin chapter 13 in the Tanya. We explain the Alter Rebbe until now gave us a description of what is a brief description of what is a tzaddik, what is a rasha, what is a benini, and we are holding in the middle of, of what is the benini. What is the intermediate person? And in the last chapter 12, we explained, we learned that the benini, one thing about the benini is that when it comes to action, or speech, or speech, or thought, he is in full control. He will never do something against the will of Hashem. And he will never speak against the will of Hashem. And he will never think something against the will of Hashem. And that is true both when it comes to matters between man and God. To eat kosher, to speak uh, good uh, to study Torah, all of those things between man and God, keep Shabbos, all of those things. Every time, smallest detail of mitzvah, he will always do the right thing. And also between man and man, not to get angry, jealousy, all of those things. Yes, he can come, he still has a, an animal soul, he still has an evil inclination in him, which brings up ideas to do the wrong thing, but he will always right away control it. And we also learned that a Bainini, at certain times, he can feel like a tzaddik. A tzaddik, we explained, is one who does not have an evil inclination. He eliminated the evil inclination. And there are various levels of a tzaddik so the tzaddik, even in his heart, he feels, he, he experiences the, the feelings that he has, the, the emotions that he has is only towards God. He despises anything which is not godly. A benini from time to time can have that feeling, and that is during the davening. When he prays, says Shema, he can have a little feeling of a tzaddik, feels godliness. What happens after davening? That is goes away, it disappears. And then it goes to the real world. In order to in order to go in the real world and do the right thing, we learned last chapter that the Bainani has two things that helps him to make the right decision. What is what are the two things? Number one, there is the Roishem, there is the the impression that he still has from the davening. So therefore, being that he has the impression from the davening, when he's all excited about Hashem, about godliness, so when something comes up to his mind, something comes up to his, in, in his thought that, that uh, he's... The, And it comes to his mind to do something wrong right away. There is the natural thing of mayach shalit alalev, mind over uh, uh, the mind controls the emotions, the heart, and therefore the benini is using that impression that he has from the davening, the excitement about Hashem, and he will he control the right and he'll do the right thing. In addition to that, we said also. This concept of moyach shalit alalev, mind controls the, the emotions, that is true not only in holy things, that's the nature, the way God created us. 
we can always make the, the right decision, even though we don't want to do it. Even though we want to do something, something else, we can always discipline ourselves and say no. So this is the natural thing. In addition to that, we said that we have also a, the benefit of the light pushes away the darkness. When you come to do, make, when you have a decision to make between good and bad, the good is Hashem, the good is godliness, the Kedusha, the holiness. The holiness always has the power that it prevails. The, the, the evil is not real. It is concealment, it's called klipa, it's covering of the godliness, covering the truth. So the Kedusha, we have the benefit, the Yisra the benefit of the light over the darkness. So, and today, in chapter 13, well, the Rebbe is going to explain. There is the statement that he quoted in the first chapter in the Tanya, saying that when it comes to the Tzaddik, the Tzaddik has one judge, the Yetzat Tov. The good inclination is his judge. The Rasha is who judges the Rasha, the, e, the bad inclination, the evil inclination. The, the Benani, the intermediate person, Zeva Zeshoiftan, both judge. There is the good inclination, the bad inclination, both the judge, the Benani. So, what are we talking about? What does it mean? Judging. What does it mean to judge? This is what Dal Rebbe is going to explain now in the Tanya. That there is the difference between a judge and a ruler. A ruler, a dictator, makes, gives his, he decides and he does what he wants. A judge only gives his opinion and you follow the majority. If, one, if, if you have one judge, it means that there is no other opinions. The tzaddik has one judge. There's no other opinion. It doesn't even come up an opinion of doing something bad. The Rasha is judged by the other side because he follows the evil inclination. When he, when he, as long as he follows, he's judged by the other side. The Benini has two judges. He, has, he can have two opinions telling him what, what to do. But then it comes that he has to make a decision. So let's look inside. Chapter 13 in the Lekutia Marim Tanya. Says the Alter Rebbe, Uba ze yuvan loshen maimer azal, maimer abesen is a chenim levracha. Accordingly, we may understand the comments of our sages. The Beninim ze ve ze shoiftam. The Beninim are judged by both. Pirush yetzer toi ve yetzer arad, the good and the evil inclinations. Both judge him and dictate his conduct. And a scriptural support for this contention, the Talmud cites, there's a verse in the Tehillim, it says, the chsiv, ki yamoid lemin evyoin lehoishia meshoifte nafshein. As it is written in the Psalms, he, the Almighty, stands at the right hand of the poor man to save him from them, to save him from them that judge his soul. So he says, Leishia mishoiftei nafshi. Saves him from the judge, from them that judge his soul. Plural, them. That judge indicates the presence of two judges within the person. The evil inclination and the good. So the Alter Rebbe points out and says, Note that our sages did not say he is ruled by both, the good and the evil, God forbid, because it's not ruled. Nikra Rosha 
Because when the evil nature gains any rule and dominion, albeit momentarily, over the small city, the small city is, of course, the, the, the body, meaning whenever the evil rules one's body, like into a city, which both the good and the evil inclination, the good inclination, the evil seek to conquer. So if the, if the evil inclination rules over the small city, even if it's in a small thing, in the thought, in the speech, in action, nikra rasha ba'isa So one is deemed wicked, a rasha, at such time. And as we said earlier, a bainani is not a rasha, not even momentarily. So the evil inclination does not rule Rather, he says, the evil inclination in the Bainani is no more than, the, for example, a magistrate or judge who expresses his opinion on a point of law. That's why people want to pack the, the Supreme Court. They want, they want to get their opinion. They don't like the opinion. They want, they want another judge. So, so, so a judge doesn't make a ruling. He just gives his opinion. Yet, in fact, his decision is not necessarily final. Why not? For there is another magistrate or judge who disagrees with him. And what needs to be done? It then becomes necessary in order to formulate a binding decision to arbitrate between the two. And the final verdict will rest with the arbitrator. And what is the arbitrator? We'll soon see. The arbitrator is, we're talking about the person himself with the help of Hashem. Says the Alter Rebbe, Similarly, in the battle between the evil inclination and the good, the evil inclination states its opinion in the left part of the vein in his heart. Meaning, what does it mean? It gives his opinion. It creates an evil desire in his heart and demands that he, that he acts accordingly. Thus, rendering judgment as to his future conduct. That's what the Yetzirah is doing. He's giving an opinion. He's telling him, yes, go ahead and do this. Something that you desire. And what happens next? As soon as this thought, this, this uh, judgment from the left side, from the, from the evil inclination, comes up in his heart, he goes and he thinks about it. From the heart, the desire ascends to the mind for contemplation. He says, this ascent is automatic. Whenever a desire is awakened in the heart, the brain will contemplate it. However, as soon as this happens, immediately upon its ascent to the brain, it is challenged by the second judge, the divine soul residing in the brain. So we're talking about the, 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 the terminology here is the Yetzer Tov, the Yetzer Or, the good inclination, the bad inclination, and is also the Nefesh Elokit and the Nefesh Abahamit, the animal, the godly soul and the animal soul. Because the, the inclination is talking about the emotions. The godly soul is talking about the intellectual part. So as soon as a person has this idea that comes from the evil inclination, immediately it goes up to the brain. And he thinks about it. And that, th those are things that happen instantly. The, that's not, that takes time, right away. Instantly he thinks about it, and immediately 
the judge, the second judge, the godly soul, disagrees and says, no, there's no way I'm doing this. I'm ispashet, and then from the godly soul, he says, this extends into the heart. Which extends into the right part of the heart where the good inclination abides, meaning it reveals itself in the emotional part. So now we have two opinions, two judges. Then how is the decision going to be taken? So it says, The final verdict rests with the arbitrator. Who is this? Who are Kadesh Bauchu or Israel Yetzatev? This is the Holy One, blessed be He, who comes to the aid of the good inclination, enabling it to prevail over the evil inclination. As our sages of blessed memory said, Il Molei Akadesh Bauchu, Israel, Ein. Yochel loy. The Gemara says that man's evil inclination gathers strength daily. And if the Almighty did not help him, meaning help in his good inclination, he could not overcome it. Yeah, overcome it. The evil, he wouldn't be able to overcome the evil inclination unless Hashem helps. he. What is the help? The help that God grants him is the glow of the divine light that illuminates his divine soul. That it may gain superiority and mastery over the folly of the fool the evil inclination, a dominion paralleling to the superiority of light over darkness, as stated above. So this is, as you remember, we said there's two things that helps the Bainini during the, during the day to overcome the, the other side. We said one thing is the Moyach Shalit al that the heart rules over the mind, and the, the, I'm sorry, the mind rules over the heart, that's by nature, and this is because he has the remnants of the davening of the inspiration, the godly inspiration that helps him to overcome his evil inclination. That is, that is true, that is true in the Bainani when he still has the remnants. When he still has the impression, he still has the impression of the davening, of the excitement. But here he talks about even when that impression is gone. Let's say he's already in the middle of the day, he's working, he's doing, he's going about his business, and all of a sudden the Yetzirah comes. Here too, says the Alter Rebbe, as soon as a bad thought comes to his mind, it goes up to the heart, um, as soon as the bad thought comes to his heart, goes out to the mind, he thinks about it, and immediately he overcomes because he has the help of Hashem. You have the two judges here, each one giving their opinion, and Hashem helps them. This is what we said, the Yisrael no oil, the fact that it's the godliness, the, his Kedusha, that helps him to overcome. You know that what the Lebli Yitzhak Bardichiva said, he said, the Bainu Shalaylam, he says, Master of the Universe, look what you did. You give in front of us a whole world, and, and uh, the world is right there with all its temptations, it's all its excitement, and you see it in front of your eyes. And then you write, you have a little book that talks about the real thing, the real life, the Kedusha, the holiness. That's written in a little book somewhere. Why don't you do the other way around? Are you surprised that people choose what they see? Why don't you do the other way around? Give us in front of us, show us the Kedusha, show us the holiness, the godliness and everything. 
And you can write in a book that there's also, by the way, you should know there is also some uh, physical temptations, all kind of things in this world. Then you'll see what, what we're going to choose. So obviously this is what the Gemara is saying, that in Malaya Kadesh Bahu Oizri Ain Yachalai. When you see all of this in front of your eyes, the temptations is so strong. If you wouldn't have the help of Hashem, no one would be able to overcome the Yetzirah. But the good news is that we do have the, the help of Hashem. We have the two judges, the Yet, the good inclination, the evil inclination, but we have the arbitrator. We have the one that gives us, puts his finger on the scale, his hand on the scale, and helps us to overcome and to see the truth and to feel the truth and overcome the Yetzirah. So this is the end of today's shir. Thank you all for joining. And uh, for the Alter Rebbe, the Balatanya, who should protect us in every aspect. And join us tonight. We're going to have a Fabrengen uh, tonight, 8 30, here in the Chabaras. All the best.